Hello, Richard PC Jack. With how wildly popular Noctua's NHL9 coolers are, it's no surprise that Noctua decided to revise this with the release of Intel's LJ1700 socket. Now, while this cooler has a very specific use case, I was still very interested to see exactly how well it would perform when paired with my test bench for CPU coolers. And also, to allow us to see how well it stacks up against some of the other CPU coolers I've reviewed on the channel. So in today's video, we're going to take a close-up look at Noctua's NHL9i CPU cooler, the specs, what you get in the box, the installation process, and most importantly, how well it performs. I'd like to thank Noctua for sending this out for review, but if you are interested in some of the other CPU coolers I've looked at on the channel, I'll include links to all those in the video description. So to start, what makes this cooler special? So most obviously, is its size. Coming in at 37mm in height and 385 grams, this makes it one of the smallest coolers you can get your hands on. Now this is really useful for extremely small form factor builds which don't accommodate large tower coolers or even a 120 or 92mm AIO. Now while the NHL9i is a great option for those kinds of use cases, it is important to pair this with a CPU that has something like a 65W TDP for the best performance. Not to say you can't use it with higher TDP chips, but you should use them with caution in that case. Despite this, the NHL9i is still a highly premium product boasting a dense aluminium fin array with a copper base plate and two heat pipes. As highlighted by the model name, this NHL9i is specifically for Intel's LGA1700 socket, so it's only compatible with 12th or 13th gen Intel CPUs. You can also get a last gen model for older Intel LGA sockets such as LGA1200 or 1151, but you can also get an AMD specific model called the NHL9A. Lastly, this cooler comes with a 6 year warranty, which is certainly pretty generous given the upgrade cycle most PC gamers go through, but it's good to know you're covered perhaps if the fan fails for example. Taking a look in the box, I have to commend Noctua on the product presentation for this cooler as it's very neat and premium feeling. So first we have a low noise adapter which reduces the voltage and can help reduce noise levels. We also get a tube of Noctua's NTH1 thermal paste, 4 of these short screws for installing the cooler, a nice little Noctua badge, always nice to see. 4 longer screws you can use for switching the 92mm fan, and of course we have the NHL9i itself. In regards to the installation process, installing the NHL9i is a little unusual, but it is still pretty straightforward. First, you need to instead apply thermal paste to the cooler instead of your CPU. Next, you lower the motherboard upside down on top of the cooler and align the threads from the NHL9i with the holes on your motherboard. Once aligned, take your short screws and first thread two of them in a diagonal pattern and once caught, begin screwing alternating corners including the last two screws and repeat until the screws no longer turn. Then you can flip the board over and plug your fan into your CPU fan header on the motherboard. Again, a bit of a non-traditional way of installing a CPU cooler, but still pretty easy to do. So to give you an idea of the performance of the NHL9i, I've applied my CPU cooler testing methodology to see exactly how well it fares at various power states. This testing methodology has only ever really been applied to traditional tower heat sinks on the channel, so it's interesting to see how well it applies to this cooler as well. For today's testing, we'll be using my Alder Lake test bench, which features an Intel Core i5-12600K running on the MSI Mag Z690 Tomahawk DDR4 Wi-Fi. I've tested the NHL9i at two different power loads ranging from 100 watts all the way up to around 150 to assess the cooler's performance at various power states. Now I usually test coolers up to around 200 watts, but given the figures from the 150 watt load testing, the reason why I didn't will become apparent very soon. For a full breakdown of my CPU cooler testing methodology, I published a video highlighting this in detail, so I'll include that in the video description. Using noise normalized thermals will better allow us to gauge the overall performance of this CPU cooler compared to other coolers on the channel. Now, don't let the NHL9i's position at the bottom of the leaderboard concern you. It's pretty obvious given the size compared to the other coolers featured on the chart, but it's still relevant data when applied to the appropriate use cases. Starting with our 100 watt load testing, the NHL9i managed an average idle temperature of 31 degrees C, while under a multi-core workload it averaged 69 C. Based on this power output, this is probably the most typical intended workload for the NHL9i, and especially given the lower power requirements for tasks such as gaming, it's a good sign for the cooler and should indicate where it shines most. However, things go south very quickly once we move on to our 150 watt load test. Testing at 150 watts, the NHL9i achieved an average idle temperature of 37 degrees, which is fine, but under full load I actually had to stop the test as our 12600K quickly reached 100 degrees C, which is just not advisable with a cooler this size. So understandably, this is why I have omitted the NHL9i from our usual 200 watt load testing. Again, don't let the NHL9i's position on the chart worry you. More so on the 100 watt low test as this should be pretty indicative of a 65 watt TDP CPU and actually shows this cooler can handle moderate workloads but more ideally gaming where your CPU isn't as heavily taxed. 
So what can we gather from today's tests? While it's pretty clear that the NHL 9i shines most when given the most appropriate scenario, you do need to manage your expectations when it comes to this cooler. But you have to give credit where credit is due with Nocturne managing to cram so much performance into such a tiny CPU cooler. There's really not many low profile CPU coolers that can achieve this. Off the top of my head, the closest contenders I can think of would be the Alpenfond Black Ridge, the Cooler Master Master Air G200P, or maybe even the newly released Be Quiet Pure Rock LP. I haven't tested those ones myself on the channel, but I wouldn't be surprised if they matched or even outperformed the NHL9i. But the secret is where Nocturne have managed to achieve this at the lowest size possible. If you would like me to test those coolers on the channel or any other ones, then feel free to drop your suggestions down in the comments below. Switching back to the NHL9i though, I think the most important thing we need to consider is what CPU this should actually be paired with, what cases you should pair with the cooler, and also some other considerations. So given Noctua's recommendation for TDP and also what we learned from our 100 watt load testing, it's pretty clear that this CPU is aimed at lower wattage CPUs. So based on this, I can highly recommend the NHL9i for something like a Intel Core i5 or i3 CPU, like the 13100, the 13400, or even maybe the 13600K. And on AMD's side, you could definitely pair this with a Ryzen 3 or 5 CPU, like maybe the 4100 or the 5600X, or maybe even the 5700X. But what CPU should you not pair with the NHL9i? Well, speaking from personal experience very recently, I attempted to pair the NHL9A with a Ryzen 9 3900 XT in my Fractal Ridge build video, and it really did not turn out very well. Now, part of the poor performance can be blamed on the case I paired this with, but even open air, this wasn't a great pairing. So bearing this in mind, higher watch CPUs like maybe even the 13900K would definitely not be a good choice with this cooler, unless you're willing to sacrifice a lot of performance. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's not easy or advisable. But I also mentioned it's important to pair this with the correct case too. Going back to my previous example, the Fractal Ridge doesn't have ample airflow for your CPU, which makes things even more challenging for the NHL9A. However, Noctua does have their NAFD1, which acts as a duct between the cooler and the ventilation on the side of your case, but it's not going to be a massive boost, but still something worth noting. So it's very important to have a case that will complement and not cripple the performance of the NHL9i. My suggestion would be to use a mini ITX case that has the option of having at least an exhaust or an intake to provide ample airflow for the cooler. This will allow you to draw heat away from the cooler and ensure that your CPU is not getting choked. Again, this isn't always possible, but still very important to consider. So to close out this video, while it's pretty clear that there are sacrifices that have to be made with the NHL9i, if you use it appropriately, there's a lot you can get out of this cooler. And with Noctua revising this for the LGA 1700 socket, as well as providing support for AMD's latest AM5 socket, don't be surprised that when Intel inevitably changes their socket again next generation, that Noctua will come out with a new version of this too. So hopefully, this video will allow you to better understand exactly how well the NHL9i performs, as well as better optimise your CPU cooler configuration. So, that's it for today's video. Thanks again to Noctua for sending this out for review, but let me know your thoughts on the NHL9i down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at PCJack94. If you'd like to talk more with myself and other like-minded hardware enthusiasts, then make sure to check out the PCJack Discord server. If you'd like to support the channel even further though, I have now launched channel memberships. If you're interested, feel free to check it out in order to help fund some of the things I do on the channel for you guys. You'll find links to all those in the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.